If you want to play college golf, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it in this video. This video is going to be a full comprehensive guide on what your scores need to be to go D1, D2, D3, uh, what grades you should maintain, what tournaments you should be playing in, how to email coaches and players, how you can market yourself and more. If you're new here or you have doubts on why I'm the one giving you advice, my name is Ryan. I play Division I golf for St. Mary's College and I've been playing golf for the last 19 years of my life. But now I don't have a plan on going pro after college, so I have all this knowledge and experience in my head and I figured why not just dump it out to all the younger people maybe starting in high school or are in high school and want to play college golf, but they just don't really have the guidance. Also, even at 200 subscribers, I've been getting emails and DMs about um, like advice on getting into college golf or like what the path is. So hopefully this answers a lot of the questions you might have. All right, so here's how I'm gonna divide up all the content into pretty easy digestible parts uh, so you don't get lost. It's like a table of contents, but just for YouTube and you can skip around with the chapters below. So to give you more context about myself and some more background, um, I started playing when I was two with like the plastic clubs and stuff. And my grandpa brought me into the sport and has been the one teaching me golf. I started taking it more seriously when I was four or five um, because I got pretty good at it pretty fast. And so we stuck with it. And I pretty much just kept practicing every day. When I was five, I had my first tournament. And when I was six, I had my first hole in one. I just kept playing in those small junior tournaments. And then when I was eight, until I was 10 years old, I got lessons from a professional coach. At age nine to 13, I played in a lot of those US kids tournaments, and I would go to North Carolina for those big junior tournaments. At that age, I was also getting started in the AJGA qualifiers. Uh, previews and I think all-stars as well when I was 14 to 15 so like the start of my high school um, I played in a lot of AJGA tournaments so I was playing in the opens and I had full status if you know how the star system works in AJGA and I also played in Toyota Tour Cups high school met tournaments and matches and uh, junior world when I was 16 uh, so this is when recruiting really starts it starts on the first day of your junior year of high school on your first day of your junior year college coaches can start reaching out to you uh, through emails and questionnaires and they can just start talking to you I had a good amount of colleges reach out to me I remember opening my mailbox on the first day of uh, junior year and I, I think I had about like 15 letters and um, questionnaires from all different colleges so I felt pretty cool at the time. Your junior year is your biggest year for recruiting. And it was when I started reaching out to coaches as well. Um, I was talking with coaches back and forth, was going on campus tours, talking about scholarships and offers and committing and stuff like that. So how did I get into contact with the current college I'm at? Um, so my junior year in the fall, my high school was invited to play at a tournament hosted by another high school, but up in the Bay Area. The course we played at was Diablo Country Club. And that was one of the home courses for St. Mary's. Uh, this was a pretty big tournament. I think there had to have been like, 10 other schools, 10 other high schools out there. A lot of high school teams and college coaches were there too, just uh, recruiting and going around. So I was in the starting lineup and I had been playing pretty good at the time, actually very good at the time. Um, like put me down at a course and I would easily shoot two under. So I played, pretty sure it was a one day tournament and I shot one under and got third. But during the round, there was a college coach following my group. I'm pretty sure he was there to watch another kid in my group. So I didn't really pay too much attention. A Couple holes later, I just said hi to the coach and was just being polite and having small talk. At that time, I was also playing pretty good. I think I just made like a couple of birdies or something. So uh, I was playing good at the right time. And that's when I think he started switching his focus to me. And so after the round and after the tournament, my team won, I got a top five. And that coach came up to my high school coach um, in the parking lot and asked if he could talk to me. And so we just started talking, um, like introducing ourselves. He was just telling me about the college and. I was just telling him about myself. But we pretty much just introduced each other, got each other's contact info and kept in touch. And from then I was just sending him my tournament schedule and just keeping him updated with my tournament scores. But that eventually led to a campus tour where I met with a head coach during that meeting it was kind of just like a it was pretty much just an interview uh, he was just asking me questions about myself and my game and all that stuff and i was just asking him questions as well he then took me on a campus tour and then gave me a tour of the course one of the home courses and at the end we just talked about scholarships and offers and committing and stuff from there i talked with other coaches about the same stuff and i thought st mary's was the best blend of scholarship facilities coach team scheduling so I just decided it was a good offer. So I committed in July after my junior year of high school and uh, I signed the contract my senior year. And now we're here. So enough about me, let's help you now. All right, so for scoring, this is a scoring benchmark of like where you should be at with your scores to play in division one, division two and division three. So for division one, you just wanna be shooting around even par or better 
consistently in tournament golf. And it's not just like your local home course men's club tournament. It's like those tournaments that affect your world amateur golf ranking, American Junior Golf Association ranking, and Junior Golf Scoreboard ranking. Those are the main three coaches care about. And coaches really like those three rankings because you're pretty much competing against other kids around your age trying to get into the same colleges as you are nationally and globally if you include world the world amateur golf rankings so for division two now you're shooting about two over to about seven over consistently also in tournament golf it's pretty much in the same tournaments with the same rankings the wagger ajj and jds but you can also play in your smaller local ones um, and if you play good in them, then you can put it on your college golf resume or just send those scores to the college coach to like keep him updated to just tell them that you're not just like sitting around doing nothing. For division three, you're gonna be shooting about high 70s, low 80s, but also pretty consistent and also in the same tournament type of golf. Um, you can't be shooting like 80 one day and then like 98 on another, but it's pretty much the same tournaments as D2, just uh, you're shooting higher scores. Now for academics, you just wanna try and get the best grades and test scores you can. I know that sounds like pretty simple, but you wanna try and get the best you can because the better they are, the more money you can get for scholarships. Uh, my GPA in high school was about 3.8, but I think 3.5 is good enough to get like a lot of scholarship money in terms of academics. And my SAT was 1300. So for St. Mary's, that was good enough to uh, get a good scholarship. But it also really depends on the school. So like if you're trying to go to Harvard, you still, I think you still have to get like a 1450 SAT or like a 1500 and still have like a 3.9 or 4.0 GPA. But it really just depends on the school. As a golfer or, like, or as an athlete, you do get more leeway. GPA and test scores aren't gonna be as high as normal students trying to get into that college. But it's better to make it as good as you can to get more scholarship money. But this is mainly for the US. I don't really know how it works internationally. Now, moving on to tournaments, uh, you wanna focus on tournaments that, again, affect your Wagger, AJJ, and JGS rankings. Um, if your state has its own ranking, I guess that's also fine. So like, if you're in Tennessee and Tennessee has like the Tennessee state rankings, it's probably good to have that as well but those first three are the main three that college coaches really look at. You also wanna have a pretty full schedule over the summer, one tournament every two weeks, or at least twice a month. I think at my peak around like sophomore year, I was having a tournament um, once a week during the summer. And during the school year, you pretty much just wanna have uh, tournaments lined up over the breaks during the school year itself. You wanna be playing in your high school matches and high school tournaments. You wanna play for your high school team. Um, and you wanna try and get into CIF, regionals, and. Uh, state. Also, if it sounds like this is a lot of tournaments and it might cost you a lot of money, if money is the issue, then AJGA does have a program that could help you out. It's it's a grant program and they help uh, alleviate the burden of money. And I was also on it. But I mean, you do have to play in those tournaments um, anyway. So when you do play them, just make sure you're making the most out of it. Um, I like AJG tournaments just because of how they're structured and organized. Their system is like starting with qualifiers and then previews and then all stars. And you're pretty much just trying to get as many stars as you can. When you play a tournament, based on your ranking, you get a specific number of stars. And from there, you can get into bigger and bigger tournaments. So after the all-stars, it'd be the open tournaments. And then after that, it'd be the invitationals, which are the highest levels. But you're pretty much just trying to rack up as many stars as you can. Uh, the highest you can get is just full status. Um, that is what I had. I think it's like getting a top five in an open tournament. Once you get to the open tournaments, that's when the bigger and better players start to come out. And that's when college coaches start to do a lot of their recruiting. And then from there, if you get into the invitationals, um, once you're in the invitationals, you're pretty comfortable. At that point, you usually are already committed to a college or you have a lot of options. All right, so now we're going into your college golf resume and uh, emailing coaches and players and stuff like that. I honestly almost forgot about the college golf resume, but I did have one. You can go to this website and you can make one here. This is what I used. Um, and you just pretty much want to fill everything out. And here's an example of a good resume from a blog. And here's an example of a bad resume. I'll also put down these links in the uh, description below. And now since you have all that set up, instead of emailing college coaches and trying to get their attention, I would either email or DM or Instagram DM players first. So college coaches get hundreds of emails a day. And if you're shooting in the 80s and you're trying to go D1, it doesn't matter how good your email is, you're not going to get a response back. Um, instead, what I would do is I would ask the players on the team. I would ask them what they were shooting at at the time they committed or what they were shooting during the time that they were getting looked at by schools or especially this one. For example, me, if you were in high school and you wanted to play for St. Mary's, uh, instead of emailing the head coach, you could 
email or Instagram DM me and be like, hi Ryan, my name is John. I'm a sophomore in college and I'm really interested in playing college golf. I just wanted to ask what scores you were shooting uh, when you signed or committed to play for St. Mary's? Uh, what scores were you shooting in tournaments? You can also note an accomplishment or like a good tournament they had in the past or just try to make a connection, but you mainly just want to be polite and respectful and just uh, be curious, just stay curious. And if you do this with a a few people on the team, you'll pretty much get a good sense of where you need to be shooting to even be considered. And once you're closer, you're in that scoring range, then you can start emailing the coaches. At that point, you could also be getting emails and offers from different schools. But let's say you're in that range and you still want to email the coach you haven't heard back from yet. So uh, you can use this email template. And I'll actually just put this in a Google Doc and I'll put it that link in the description down below. So you could just use it. Just make a copy and you can use it. And then after every couple of tournaments, you can update them and say uh, nice things about the program. You could like mention something new that just happened or just ask questions. So just send them your scores, send them your upcoming tournament schedule, and then uh, say something about the program or ask questions or something like that. If you see them at one of your tournaments, go and say hi, introduce yourself. Uh, just, just be polite and respectful. And you can also mention the emails. Now for marketing yourself. I would highly recommend an Instagram page. Uh, you can use your main account if you have any inappropriate or weird stuff on it. Uh, just delete that. At this point, you're trying to become more professional in your, uh, in your life anyway, so it's better to just keep your socials clean and professional because uh, if you do get in, you'll be representing the school, the team, and yourself as an athlete. So it's just time to be more professional. On the Instagram page, I would post about tournament scores and uh, accomplishments in general. Honestly, I would recommend starting a completely new Instagram page. And uh, every time you do good or great in a tournament, you could just post about it like this. Anytime you're on a cool golf trip, just post about that. If you are doing a cool drill you like, you can post about that as well. Maybe if you're in a practice round at your home course and you break the course record, then just post a scorecard and that's also a really good look. But just make it purely about golf. And uh, you can do some marketing on TikTok and YouTube Shorts, but college coaches aren't really on those platforms. They're mainly on Twitter and Instagram. I don't use Twitter, so I don't really have advice on that. But if I did have a Twitter, I would just make it also golf related. I'd just try and make it as similar to the Instagram page as possible. Just keep it professional and clean and make it golf related. You'd be kind of surprised how many college coaches and college programs are on Instagram and how they would follow you and stuff. If they have some interest in you, they would follow you and just keep tabs on you. So make sure you are uh, on your best behavior on and off the course. All right, so for some post-college thoughts, um, these are some things you should be thinking about before you go into college. Uh, you should be thinking about what you wanna do after college. So playing a sport at the collegiate level, especially at the D1 level in general is intense in terms of training, competing, and traveling. So you could miss out on opportunities of like internships and jobs. For example, you miss a lot of school for your tournament, so you have to make up all those assignments and you have to make up all the exams or just take them as you're traveling. You have to dedicate a lot of time towards practicing, working out, and uh, golf is year round, so it's not like other sports where they have the fall off or spring off. You're, begin you're gonna be playing in the fall and spring, and the only break you get is winter break. And you can't major, or it's highly recommended that you steer away from certain majors like STEM majors or those really hard ones where it's like uh, computer science or chemistry or physics or engineering or anything like that. Those courses are already hard enough on itself and being piled on top of golf uh, would just make it way harder. So you either need crazy good time management uh, or you have to sacrifice a lot of other stuff or you can just be super smart, I guess. And you have a lot less time than the average student to do extracurriculars, uh, be involved in stuff you would uh, want to, hang out with friends, getting a job or internship, a lot of the normal student stuff. You kind of do have to sacrifice a lot and uh, getting a job or internship is actually way harder because you're expected to practice practice and travel um, during the summer as well. So you can't really go into the office for 40 hours a week and have time to practice and travel for those tournaments. So if you are in high school and you really wanna play division one golf um, because you wanna go pro after, go ahead. That This is like the best path for that. But if you wanna become like a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or get ahead of other people with like any other job, I would not recommend going division one. I would just recommend getting ahead of your career and then playing golf as a hobby. Maybe division two and division three is less intense, but I can't really speak on that. I don't really have experience. Uh, there. Up until my junior year of college, I wanted to go pro. That was the original goal, but things have changed now. So, so I'm just giving you a heads up from someone who's four to five years ahead of you. All right. So some general advice I have for you. Scores are the biggest thing for a college coach. Um, 
and it will do a lot of the talking for you. But one thing you don't really think about is um, how you carry yourself on the course, um, how you control your emotions after a bad shot or a bad round of golf, how you speak to your parents. Stuff like that is super important. It's a lot more considered to a college coach than you would originally think. So just treat the course well, don't slam your clubs, uh, treat your parents well, don't yell curse words and stuff on the on the course. You just have to think about that. You, when you're on the college golf team, you represent the school and the team. Any of that stuff could get you kicked off the team or it could get your entire team kicked off from a facility. And that would all be on you. So just don't do that. My main advice is just to carry yourself to the highest degree on and off the course. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you still have a question, just leave it down in the comments below. Also, if you're a person who's playing in college golf right now, feel free to give your own advice and and uh, experience in the comments below.